Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will see how to test the DOM using testbed. Up to now, we have seen using the testbed, we have created the component instance, but we are unable to access the template of the component. So now using the testbed, how we can access the template, uh, the component template, and also how we can do this DOM testing. Let's try to see in this video. So in the previous video, we have seen about the component fixture. So component fixture is nothing but when we test bit dot create component if you do it will return you a component fixture. Component fixture has the component instance and the native element to access the component template. So component fixture has two things mainly one is a component instance which you can access the properties and methods of the component uh, the class component and also you will have another one another one that is native element so which will give you to access the components template. The value of the component fixture dot native element has the any type. So the data type of this one is then any. So we don't have we cannot we cannot mention this one as a particular data type. Why? Because Angular cannot know at compile time what kind of HTML element the native element is or if it is an even HTML element or not. So that means when we are at the compile time, so the Angular cannot know that that native element has which kind of HTML template. Neither it doesn't know that even if it is an HTML element or not also it doesn't know that component fixture. So because of that reason so the component fixture dot native element has an any type. The application might be running on a non browser platform. So when we are testing so we are not testing that one in a browser or anything. So just it, uh, it runs in a non browser platform such as the server or a web worker where the element might have a diminished API or not exist at all. So it has a less API or it does not exist at all. The tests we do are designed to run in a browser. So the tests what we are doing right now the angular applications so are designed to run in a browser. So now we can think that a native element value will always be an HTML element or one of its derived classes. So we know that applications we are developing is for the browser so in order to run in the browser only. So we can assume that the native element so which the component fixture returns you so you can assume that we that it will always be an HTML element. So we understood that now the native element is an HTML element. So now we can use all the property all the properties what we can use for the HTML element like query selector and all those things to traverse the HTML element. So how we will traverse that one using the query selector query selector all these all things we will be using right. So we can use it for this native element also. So the code looks like this. So now we have learned about this native element. We understood that that native element uh, the angler doesn't know what type of data what type of data it, the native element will return you. So because of that reason the native element is of type any and we under, we know that the angular application runs in the browser. So that means the native element always will return you an HTML element. So we cannot assume that what type of HTML element we know that HTML element. So now here because of this reason so the code will look like this one. So constant banner element it is of type HTML element and we are having fixture dot native element. So when this fixture dot native element is of type HTML element and you can apply the method query selector. So query selector of P means so in this banner element so that means in this component template it will search for the paragraph and it will check that P dot text content is having the content or not it will try to check it. So this is how we will be writing the code. So uh, this is how we will be accessing the template uh, template in a component. The angular fixture provides the components element directly through the fixture dot native element. So that means the angular fixture component fixture. So it will provide the components element components element means the template element directly through the fixture dot native element. But there is also another convenient method to access the HTML. So now we understood that in order to access the component element fixture dot native element will give you the access. But there is also a convenient method another method is there in the component fixture to access the HTML element. So what is that one? The method is fixture dot debug element. So this debug element what is this debug element? So here if you try to see banner debugger element is equal to fixture dot debug element and for this debug element you will write you will unwrap this debug element. So to get the native element. So now here you will be getting banner debug element dot native element. So why we need to use this extra debug element instead of directly using this fixture dot native element. So previously we have learned that fixture dot native element will give you the HTML element right. So then why we need to use this debug element and again to apply this native element. The reason is 
द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ दि नेटिव एलिमेंट डिपेंड अपन द रन टाइम इनविरामेंट यू कुड बी रनिंग दिस टेस्ट इन नॉन ब्रउजर प्लेटफॉर्म दट ड हेव ए डॉम or whose dom emulation does not support the full html element api so right now we know that the test we are running in the browser so we are able to get this all the dom and all those things but if you are running this test in a non browser platform that doesn't have a dom or anything means then if you directly use this fixture dot native element means it the test will throw an error because of this reason we'll use this debug element angular relies on the debug element abstraction to work safely across all the supported platforms instead of directly calling this fixture dot native element so angular relies on the debug element that works safely across all the supported platforms instead of creating an html element tree angular creates a debug element tree that wraps the native elements for the runtime platform so instead of directly calling this html element tree using this fixture dot native element if you call this debug element angular creates a debug element tree that wraps the native elements so in the debug element you will have all these native elements for the runtime platform the native element property unwraps the debug element and returns the platform specific element object okay so when you use the native element for the debug element then the debug element will unwraps the debug element and it will give you the platform specific elements object because the test we actually design is to run only in a browser A native element in this test will always an HTML element whose familiar methods and properties you can explore within a test. So you know that you are always runs in a uh, will always run these tests in a browser. So native element will always return HTML element and you can apply those all uh, DOM property methods and all those things for a in the test. So now the code will look like this. When you know now you understood about the debug element, right? Now the code will look like this. So first you will get the debug element fixture dot debug element. from this debug element you will get the a native element and from this native element you will apply this query selector of p and you will check that banner works okay so this is how you will be checking although the tests in this guide all run in the browser some applications might run on a different platform at least some of the time for example the component might might render first on the server as a part of the strategy so when you are using angular universal or server side rendering and all those things the component might render first So whenever you are running this server side rendering rendering application the as a part of strategy to make the application launch faster on a poorly connected devices the server side renderer might not support the full html element api if it doesn't support query selector the previous test could fail so here so when this one is running on this what i can say yeah sorry so here we have seen this code right so when this one is from the server side rendering and all those things means so here debug element you are accessing again with the native element so here this uh, this one does not provide any html element or, the, or anything why because the html element and everything is executing in the server side so now uh, because of the reason you will not have access to this query selector so what we need to do for in this case so in this case what you can do is the debug element offers query method so you have an another another method the debug element offers query method so instead of directly using the native element you can use this query method that works for all supported platforms so you either you can test it in the browser based html element or in the server side server side based html element also you can use this query method these query methods take a predicate function that returns true when a node in the debug element tree matches the selection criteria so here if you use this query so here it will look like this So first you will get the debug element. Inside the debug element, you will do the query and by dot CSS of you will use this selector. So by dot CSS by is a static method. So here you will use this query dot by dot CSS of p, and here you can use paragraph d dot native element. Then you will get about uh, this paragraph uh, debug element, and you can unwrap that one using the native element, and you can check it like this. So this the this one does not throw any errors if you are running the code in server side rendering or the browser side or anything. It is safe now. for you are using by.css this one all so the by.css static method selects debug element nodes with a standard css selector so in the nodes it will try to search it using the standard css selector the query returns the debug element for that one and now you will unwrap the debug element to get the paragraph element using the native element so now what i can say is so uh, whether it is using safe or not for example when you know that the application only runs in the browser based thing and you are sure that these html html element methods are available in this one means it's better to use this native element and uh, you can use it why because it will take so much of time the performance level uh, it will take so much of time so when you are sure that 
the tests are executed uh, conformly on the browser and all those things means you can use it like this but you are not uh, but you want to test these all things in different types of platforms and all those things means so it's safe for uh, it, it, it is better to use this query dot query of by dot css of p and you use this native element instead of using directly query selector and native element like that okay hope you understood about this uh, how to d how to get the components element using the test bed so with native element and with the debug element so these are the two methods with which you can get it so in the next video we will try to do the practical implementation of this debug element and the native element hope you understood about this test bed uh, test bed if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you